Thinking about buying an RV? Here are some things to consider. Next. Next. <laughs> Welcome to our channel. We are Liz and Paul. These are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And you can certainly live amazing with the right RV. That's right. Well, actually, since Paul moved in, we have been talking about whether the RV we're in right now works for us or if we need to buy another. And we thought we'd go ahead and make this video because if you're thinking about buying an RV, there are some very important things to consider. So we have the Grand Design 260 RD. It's a 30-foot fifth wheel. And there are some things that are working for us and... Some things that aren't. Here are some things that you might want to ask yourself. Number one, are you a minimalist? Yeah, we thought we were, uh, but to be honest, we found out that, that we still have a lot of stuff and uh, it just takes up a lot of space in the rig. We don't travel light, but it's good to know that before you go out and buy an RV. Number two is layout or floor plan. It's so important and the very first thing to think about is does the floor plan work for you? And you want a space in the camper where you can relax. A nice recliner, just a comfortable spot where you can sit down and really relax. I like to hang out in the dinette uh, and just hang out on the booth. If you're doing a lot of camping and you're in campgrounds, you need to look at where the windows are because chances are you're gonna have neighbors. So for us, it's really important that we have a back window that we do right now so that we can enjoy the view. I was backed into a spot with my old trailer um, when I was in the Sacramento area. I was backed up to a river and I had no back window to enjoy that. Number three, the fridge. Yeah, you really need to think about how much you generally have in your fridge, how much perishables, how much dairy, milk, meat, that kind of thing to make sure that you don't get a fridge that's too small. We've been shopping for a new rig and some of the floor plans we really like had small, one had a 10 cubic foot bridge in it and it was a deal breaker for us. Because if you don't want to go to the grocery store that much, then you need a fridge that will allow you to space your grocery shops further apart. Number four is freezer. You would not believe that some RV fridges make wimpy small freezers. Now, if you like to shop ahead, buy in bulk, freeze a lot of stuff, make sure that your freezer is big enough for you. I make smoothies and that requires ice and frozen fruit and it just takes up space. Number five is a biggie, or at least it is for us, kitchen storage. Yeah, this is where we realize that we are not minimalists. We're, it's certainly where, where kitchen gadgets are concerned. We both love to cook and we have so many gadgets and we have run out of space to store them. We have a commercial blender, a... Panini press. Yeah, a, a coffee grinder. Instapot. Crock pot. <laughs> <laughs> and we actually ran out of space and we have pots and pans stored above our cabinets and in our oven. So if you're like us, if you like to have a lot of kitchen gadgets, you've got to consider that when you're looking at an RV. Is there enough space for all the stuff that you want to bring along? Number six, bathroom. You want to make sure that you actually get in the shower and make sure it's big enough for you. Also that there's enough storage for the towels, the medical supplies, and... Counter space. Number seven is the bedroom. So after Paul moved in, the bedroom actually started feeling really small. Say even... it ain't so. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> so even though it's a walk around bed, we learned that two people can't change in the bedroom at the same time. Yeah, and making the bed. Uh, this is a big one for any RV, really, uh, but, but some are worse than others. Just consider that when you're looking at RVs. Look at what it's going to take to make that bed. We've seen some RVs where you actually have to pull the mattress all the way out just to make the bed. Number eight is closet. This is another big one, or in our case, a kind of a small one. We only have 30 inches of hanging space. It's really not enough. It, it was plenty for just me, but not enough now that Paul's moved in. If you're considering buying an RV, I strongly recommend that you measure how much hanging space you need. And in our case, we hang coats that we're not using and they take up a lot of space too. Yeah, they do. Number nine is outside storage. This is so easy to overlook when you get excited about a rig, you're at a dealership, but then you take it home and you realize, uh-oh, there's not enough 
outside storage. Yeah, if you're full timers like we are and a tool guy like I am. <laughs> he has lots of tools. Yeah, it'll fill up the uh, outside storage in well we filled up our outside storage and and it makes it tough because then where do you put the power cord, the water hose, ladder, outside chairs? We bring those into the rig and uh, the ladder and the and the chairs go on the bed. Uh, the power cord gets put on the floor just inside the door. And that just makes it so hard to boondock because now we have all this stuff piled on the bed and piled on the floor. So we boondock and it's like 10 minutes just to unload the bed. And, and where do you put everything? Then you've got a security issue if you're boondocking because you've got, you're not using your power cord more than likely. And, and, um, Somebody could come along and snatch it, and those things aren't cheap. So yes, lack of storage and the difficulty of boondocking is the number one reason that we have decided that we actually are going to sell our 260RD and get another rig. We've been out shopping, and we haven't decided yet. So stay tuned.